Hi, today we're going to be making a timer. The easiest way to do this is you want to create little cutouts that are basically the eight segment display pieces. They're just a block and you trim the sides and then you place them to look like an eight. It's almost how like a digital clock, per se. So after you have the pieces, you want to select one and press Control T and make it a funk brush. Press apply. And now you want to select name. And you want to name it something. And then you want to keep all these pieces organized. So I'm just going to name it timer number one, and then segment A. And then click apply. And then you want start disabled. Yes. Alright, so now you want to do this to every piece on your timer and change the name. So, if I copy the entity, I paste it on here. Segment A, I just now rename it to segment B. So now I have segment A and segment B. So you just want to do that to every piece and then we can move on. So now we have all of our pieces as funk brushes with different names. Mine are with timer segment and then a letter and then number two because I have three letters. I have letter one, two, I mean number one, two, and three. So now what we have to do is we have to program in how it's going to recognize what number is what. So create a new entity and you want this to be a logic underscore case. And you click apply and I'm going to name it timer case number one. I like to stay organized by keeping it underneath the number that it represents. So now, you'll see case 1 through 16. And in case 1, you want to put the number 1. In case 2, you want to put the number 2, and so forth. And you want to do this all the way down to 10. And when you get to 10, you want to put 0 in the 10 slot. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Click Apply. Now this is where we have to tell it how to recognize what is what number. So click Add on, under the Outputs tab. Click add on case one and now you want to enable the two segments that will make the number one so it's just these two that make the segment one so that's what's going to be enabled so now you want to click add on case two and we want to enable all the pieces that would make number two so now that we have that, but there's still the one piece that we didn't use from one, because we used this piece in two from the number one, but this piece isn't used. So we do need to disable one piece, so we just click add on case two, select that piece, and disable. So now for number three, click add on three. Now we already know that these pieces are being used, so we enable this one, and we also have to disable this one. And then that will be our number three. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this for all the numbers, and you should do it too. So I'll be right back. Now I just deleted my other two numbers. Now if you only have the one number made, there's a shortcut that you can do. You select all the pieces and the logic case. You press Control C. You hit Edit, and then Paste Special, and click Make Sure Pasted Entities Have Unique Names. Click OK. Then you just move it over, and you'll notice all the names now, they added a number onto the end. So now for me, it says timer segment A and then number two. And then if I paste special again, it'll go number three. And that can be done infinite amounts of time, so it'll just keep adding on a number. And the case at the bottom has also added the numbers on the inputs, and it, its name has changed itself. So that's a very easy way to, uh, to go ahead and copy those without much hassle. So the next thing we need to do is create a math counter. This is going to act as basically how many times a number will count out before it changes. So math, math counter, apply, and again I'm just going to name it something resembling this. So I'm going to name it timer one math, and again place underneath, click apply, and then for this one you want maximum legal value to be 10. And since this is going to be a minute timer, we just want to copy this over 
and rename it to say number two. And wait, since it's a minute timer, the maximum legal value for this one can be six, because 60 seconds in a minute. And this last one over on the right side, we want it to be nine. So this will be a nine minute and uh, 60 second timer, basically. Other than that, it'll just be messed up. All right, so now we need to create an actual timer. So for this, you want a logic timer. And this can go anywhere, but again, I like to in the way it outputs. So now for the timer, I'm going to also name it something. I'm just going to name it timer. And I want it to start disabled so I can enable and disable my clock. So the refire interval, we want it to be one because it's going to fire every one second. So now you want outputs, add, on timer, and you want to select the math counter for the first number. And you want to click add, and then with the parameter override of one. Click apply. And now for that math counter that we just gave that input to, you want to go to the outputs tab on timer math number one. Click add, out value, logic case, in value. And then just leave that as none. And then we also want to add another one. On, on hint max. Now we want to select the second one. We want to click add one. And then also on hint max. And now we want to target itself. And we want this to be set value zero. Now, this is a lot of stuff that we just did that's probably very random to you. But basically how this works is the timer refires itself every one second. And every time it fires itself, it adds one to this math counter. Whenever the math counter gets a value, it outs the value into the case and it inputs the value of the number that it gets. That's why we named all these one through zero, because it outputs in numbers. So, and the on hit max, when it targets the second one and hits add, that's just basically hitting 10 seconds. And on hit max, the value to zero, it sets itself back to zero. So once it hits 10, it adds one to the second counter and sets itself back to zero so it can count back up again. And for the second math counter, we want to click add on hit max target the math counter all the way over on the right and we want it to be add one then again add on hit max we want to set itself back to zero and we also want to do the out value to the case and then in value and for this last one all we need to do, since this is the last number in the chain, we just want out value, in value. And all you need to do to start your timer is, I'm going to do mine with a funk button. So you click outputs, add, on pressed, timer, enable. And that's all you do. If you want to pause the timer, you stop it. You, d you disable the timer. And if you want to clear the timer, all you do is, what I like to do is I like to have a reset case, which is case 16, reset, click apply, and then on case 16, you just disable all the segments. So now we're in our map, and if I walk up and I press start, it will automatically start counting. And then once it reaches 10, it will set it the first digit back to zero and add one to the second digit. Now there's a cool little output that you can use if you really want to see what's going on here. You put on SV cheats in your console and then you type in ENT message draw one. Now what this does can only, only be used in single player. Now what this does is it shows you all the outputs that are being fired. So we know that this is a timer because of where we placed it and it just hit 10 because it added the value over to here and you can see it enabling and disabling all the digits and you'll notice when it reaches over it adds to there again and it just keeps counting it's about to hit uh, the one digit mark when it reaches 60 and back to zero I hope this tutorial has helped you thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe